than when we read more modern forms of history or stories. These first foundational stories in the Bible are not just written to describe what had happened once in history, like a history textbook or a news article might be written. These biblical stories are written to enable us to meditate on God's Word and hear and see God's presence more intimately and more powerfully in our lives today. I can't emphasize enough the importance of understanding this. These stories are told in such a way which invites us to see ourselves in the story today. So it's not so much that we just imagine what it would have been like standing with Moses as Pharaoh's mighty army was bearing down with no capacity to defend themselves, nowhere to hide, nowhere to run. Rather, it is when we find ourselves feeling afraid or stuck or trapped or hopeless. In the, at times in these in our lives, that we recognize that we too are living this story. We need to learn to turn to God in faith, to find a way forward when there seems no way. We need to learn to move forward in true courage, actually toward the fear and uncertainty of our times, and not be overcome by them. The Ukrainians may have felt this way when the mighty Russian army first invaded their country, and no one else in the world thought they could possibly defend themselves against such an overwhelmingly superior army. When the United States government reached out to President Zelensky in order to assist him in getting him out of the country alive, he responded famously, I need ammunition not arrived. Even now, as Russia tries to amass an even larger army and threatens the use of nuclear weapons, we know that their brutal tactics may win some battles, but never the ultimate victory. We know this because we know how the story ends. Pharaoh's armies, destroyed in the chaos of their own violence, turned back in on themselves. God frees his people from the unjust power structures, not just of Pharaoh, but from injustice during any and all times and places. Until, as Jesus teaches us to pray, God's kingdom is on earth as it is in heaven. It is never easy to escape these systems of abusive power, but abuse of power ultimately will be its own undoing. You see, the strength of Pharaoh's army was best symbolized by the legions of chariots which would ride into battle, causing panic and fear in their foes. But this very symbol of overwhelming and fearful military power, God turned around against them. And you must realize that the sea has always been a symbol in the Bible of chaos. And so God caused the wheels of the Pharaoh's chariots to get stuck in the mud and caused that whole army to, to uh, panic and drown in the sea. You see, tyrants who try to use brute force to keep people from being free sow the seeds of freedom. For their own reliance on brute force will cause their own destruction. Unfortunately, we have plenty of pharaohs in our own country, too. I am greatly disturbed when Christians today make use of threats intimidation, and even violence in order to try to get others to live by their own set of social values. I heard this week about Christians from a small town in Idaho using the Bible to physically threaten its librarians. 
They were seeking to ban books which their own library didn't even own. But they didn't respectfully ask that their library not purchase those books and follow a mutually respected process for objecting to what they perceived as offensive material. Instead, they immediately threatened physical violence and used whatever power they had to try to get their way, even if it meant shutting the whole library down. If Muslims were doing the same thing, even perhaps attempting to ban the very same books, but using their sacred scripture, these same Christians would condemn them as terrorists in no uncertain terms. The pharaohs of this world are known by many names. Abuse of power, no matter whose name it is wielded in, stands against our God who says, I am your God who has freed you from Egypt. At the deepest level, however, this is a story not just about being freed from the abusive and corrupt power structures in our world. This is how God also frees us spiritually from being slaves to our very own bondage to sin, which prevents us from loving God, from loving others, from even loving ourselves with our whole heart and our whole mind and our whole being. Our Exodus story tells us that our own path from slavery to freedom is never easy or comfortable or safe or predictable. The only way to true freedom is to face our deepest fears and be brought to a place of death and surrender. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? We often, in our imagination, immediately come to the defense of God and think he's being falsely accused of bringing them out to the wilderness to die, but in a way that is exactly what God is doing and what must be done. If they are going to be reborn as a free people of God, they're going to have to die to their old enslaved life and their illusions of security it offered them. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and all you have to do is keep still. Again, because Moses says this, we think Moses must be right. <laughs> and then we even skip over the very next verse in which it says Moses was completely wrong. <laughs> it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. This story tells us that faith is more than simply trusting God is going to save you. It's about being brought into the wilderness, facing death, letting go of everything that gives you a sense of security and strength by your own power. And then when all hope is lost, not simply cry out for deliverance for God to save you, but to then actually move forward when you have lost hope. Before the way forward has even been revealed as anything resembling a safe path. It is walking into the waters, the unknown, the unknowable, insecure future. It is walking in the valley of the shadow of death. And very few people seem to realize that we're living this Exodus story today. Every one of us is on a journey of faith. We must face our fears and walk through the uncertainty of our times. We must move forward in this liminal time or we'll simply stay stuck in one form of slavery or another. And this very scary journey is a description of what it means to grow in faith itself 
at all. Christian Schwartz, a leading author in church leadership, teaches about this as the difference between level A spiritual growth and level B spiritual growth. Level A growth is discovering what it feels like to be home with God. It creates a feelings of security, stability, and groundedness. You look for people who reinforce your beliefs so you have a sense of belonging to a group of like-minded souls. Level A gives you a safe place to land. Yes, indeed, you can trust God. And you hopefully feel secure in that love. That's what we're trying to do in our Sunday school for our kids. Help them know in this scary world God is with them. They can trust God. And they teach that to us as well. But level B growth is a spirituality of seeking. It is making yourself vulnerable like you're traveling in the wilderness. And you sense how much you need other people who think and feel entirely differently than you do. Level A might define your comfort zone, but level B makes that comfort zone disappear before giving you a broader, more inclusive one. So that God is now the center of your focus, not your own perceptions, your own opinions, or even your own core beliefs. In the wilderness, you have nothing. Well, we never outgrow level A when we reach level B, Christian Schwartz writes. But we go back and forth in a constant dying and rebirthing process, finding the courage to reach deeper and deeper levels of understanding, faith, hope, and love. Growing in faith is like walking through the chaos of waters, being parted by the winds of God, finding yourself surprisingly on dry ground and with gratitude, celebrating with God, but then realizing that you're starting over again on this fearful journey, testing and transforming your faith again and again. But most of us, most of us want to stay safe in level A faith. Like those uh, Hebrews who say, it was better for us to stay enslaved in Egypt. Or like when we conveniently don't correct Moses' statement that all you have to do is just stay still and trust God. There is so much more depth in the story than the Bay. But I hope that you see this is not just some story about what God did some time long ago. This is no history textbook. But this is the living word of God. And may God help us to grow in faith. May God give us the courage to walk in faith and continually to be surprised as we find a way forward, especially when there appears to be no way. In Jesus' name.